Hello everyone, in this video we are going to talk about solving quadratic equations by factoring them. So there are going to be multiple forms of this, so you might want to really, really, really take some notes other than just watching this video. Uh, because it's not just one type of a quadratic equation, probably we're going to end up with different types. So you might want to use your notes uh, to just be able to do the similar questions. Okay, for this one or for any other quadratic equations, if you want to solve an equation, first look at the common factors that you can factor out. We learned about this, so I'm not going over it again. So looking at here, this term has y, that one has y. That's something that I can factor out. So if I factor out the y out of y squared, it simplifies to y. There's a minus sign in between them, and then 33 equals 0. So now I reduced my equation into this form. This is pretty similar to another IXL assignment that we did this week. So if you refer back to that one, I don't even remember what it was, but it was this week. So solving this, this is the zero product property. I remember the name of the assignment, but not the code. So zero product property, when you have two things multiplied, if, it, if they're equal to zero, either the first one equals to zero, that's my first one, that should be equal to zero, or the second one should be equal to 0. If y minus 33 equals to 0, let me just do this for once, and then I will continue with the shortcut for the others. Set it up equal to 0, and then do the opposite to get the y by itself. So y equals 33. Basically, just change the sign of the number you have, and then that's your solution. So 0 and 33 f would be the answers for this. Zero it says write your solutions as an integer integers are like negative 10 0 11 7 all of those numbers positives or negatives proper fraction improper fraction in simplest form if there are multiple solutions which there are right now separate them with commas okay 0 and 33 let's submit it yeah, the next one is a different kind for example uh, this is called trial and error. I showed you how to this method work works be, uh, before. Probably you didn't watch the videos. <laughs> so uh, what we will do, we are going to use trial and error. So let me rewrite this inequality equation over here first. X squared. No, there's no x. M squared plus nine m minus 10 equals 0 so when it equals to 0 if you have like x squared y squared on the other side that's a quadratic because that's the highest power in the equation of a variable it's m squared called quadratic again so here is how quadratic equations work with all of them there's this trick the factors of the equation equals to this the product of them equals to that. So when you multiply them, you get negative 10. When you add them, you get positive 9. Okay? So now we are thinking again, this is for the factors, not for the solutions. So we are going to think about what two numbers multiplied together gives me negative 10 what two numbers added together gives me positive 9 okay so I'm, let's think about the numbers that are multiplied to negative 10 okay let's start with that uh, negative 5 or let's first pick the number out of 1 negative 1 times 10 that's equal to negative 10 so one of them should be negative because when I multiply if I want my answer to be negative, one of the numbers should be negative, just one of them. Or negative 2 times 5, negative 10. Or negative 5 times 2, now I'm switching them around. Or negative 10 times 1. These are my options, right? Now I'm looking for these 
numbers to figure out if either one of these add to positive 9. When I add them together, they should be 9, positive. That's it. So it looks like this is these are the numbers that I'm looking for because if I just add negative 2 and 5, let's just redo them over here by adding them. Negative 1 plus 10 is just positive 10, 9. I'll do the second one too. Negative 5 plus 2 equals negative 3. So the one that works is this one. I don't want to do the fourth one as well. So negative 1 and 10 are the numbers uh, that I need uh, that I'm looking for. Those are my factors. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Those are my factors. So I put my factors right by my x's. So x minus 1 and then x the other number was positive 10 equals 0. And if I solve this, this is like the other assignment that I mentioned that we did earlier this week. It's just like number one, the other question that we did. At this point, this is the zero product property. Either the first one equals to zero or that one equals to zero, which basically tells you to switch the sign of the numbers to get your solutions. Okay, x is one and negative 10. So let's put those numbers in, one and negative 10. I first put the negative 10, so that's it. Let's take this one out. Look for a common factor to take out, which is m. Both of them have m. I'm taking it out. m plus 14 equals 0. Now, again, 0 product property. So either this guy here must be equal to 0, or that guy over here must be equal to 0. If m plus 14 is 0, m is negative 14. Those are my solutions. 0 and negative 14. Let's submit it. Let's skip some levels. Same logic in here. Take out the s and then use 0 product property. Let's do this one. This is cool. I like this question. Okay. Hmm. For this, mm -hmm. I'm thinking an easy way to explain it. There's no easy way. Okay. Now, step one, I'm going to see if I can use, I cannot use the same method that, that I showed you it would be my shortcut okay I'm gonna use another method that I mentioned in the first quarter when I was doing like quadratics so let's get to it 8s squared minus 47s minus 6 the method that I showed you about like make a list of the numbers that you multiply and then like add them together try to figure out if you can come up with the middle number works if you have only one s squared. If it was like this, then we would try what we did with the other question, that we had three terms. But it's not one s squared, so I'm not gonna do it. it. It wouldn't work. So in here, what we are going to do is, I call it break it down. Break down the first term, break down the last term. So for eight, s squared I'm gonna try this first 4s times 2s gives me 8s squared because 4 times 2 is 8 s times s is 8s squared and then I'll do the same for 6 I'll try okay 4 and 2 is not gonna work I am seeing it right now I'll do 1 times 6 and then I, I'm just doing this to explain you that this method is called trial and error and you're gonna make some errors so one of these numbers should be negative I wanna put the negative in front of the greater number because the sum also must be negative in the end so what I do in here 1 times negative 6 
over here. 1 times negative 6 gives me negative 6. 4s times 2s gives me 8s squared. So the setting looks right. Now let's see if I can get negative 47s when I do cross multiplication. 4 times 6 is negative 24s. And then 2 times 1 is just 2s. It's positive. And if you add these together, you get that number. So it didn't work. I didn't get the middle number. I need a negative 47. So how I can do it is if I just, let me try this. If I just remove that 4 and 2, let me just fix this. This was 8s. Okay. What if I just try 8s and 1s? 8 times 1 is still 8. S times S is S squared. Uh, I'm not touching the right side because I think this is right. This is the right way to do it. Now, instead of this, now that I know this is not going to work, I can try this. 8s times negative 6. 8 times negative 6 is negative 48. S and then plus 1 times 1s. That's 1s. Combine the numbers. Negative 48 plus 1. That's negative 47. Keep the variable. So now I know that these are my set. This is my setting. Everything in here is right. So to for my factored form, here is what I do. I did the cross multiplication to test out whether my setting is right, which is okay. Now what I will do is I'll just pair the first line up and then the second line up together. So 8s and if there's no negative it is positive plus 1 is my first factor and then 1s minus 6 is my second factor. It's just s minus 6. That's the same as 1s. And then bring down this and then bring down the 0. So we dealt with the left side, and then I brought down the equal, and I brought down the right side. Okay? Now, the question becomes the same thing. Zero product property. Set the first one up equal to zero. Set the second one up equal to zero. So let's change the color over here. This is the easier one. So I want to do this first. S equals 6 is going to be my solution because let's just, redo, let's just do the work. S minus 6 equals 0. To get the s by itself, I add it to each side, so s equals 0. The shortcut is just change the sign of the number. Or in here, s equals, just change the sign of that number, negative 1, but this negative 1 is 8s, and we are trying to find the value of 1s. So divide it by 8. And here is the work for this, 8s plus 1 equals 0, subtract 1, and then divide by 8. If you realize, these are the words that I just used like 10 seconds ago. So, negative 1 eighth and 6 are going to be my solutions. I think that's all for this video. It's already 14 minutes or so. Negative 1 over 8 and uh, 6. So, that's it for this video. Uh, let me know if you need any help, guys. Thanks for watching and I will see you in another video. Please watch this video twice. Take notes. You'll need them. You'll definitely need them. Uh, thanks again.